Today on Rust Beards and Gear, we check out what's in my guitar rack. Every time I post something like an Instagram photo or have some B-roll footage of the studio and I show a little sneak peek of the guitar rack, I inevitably have questions of, hey, you know, what's in the rack this week sorts of questions. And I thought it would be cool to have kind of an ongoing thing where I kind of just document what's in my studio guitar rack at any given time as a lot of these guitars are rotated in and out constantly. So from one week to another, the rack could be totally different depending on what I need, you know, different guitars for, depending on if I'm demoing certain pedals that require certain guitars, amps, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the first episode of what's in Fluff's guitar rack. So guitar number one is, you guys have seen this before. This is my Mr. Sparkle guitar. This is, I, I usually refer to this as my number one. Uh, this be, subsequently became my newly released signature model that came out this year, just a couple of months ago. Um, this is a 2019 um, custom finish Stingray RS guitar. And at the time, I'd signed on with, with Music Man and we had a lot of touring, so we thought, uh, in Dragged Under, my former band, and I needed some tour guitars. And the Dustin Kensrue guitar was announced, but it was not out yet. And up until that point, you could not get a, a Stingray with this configuration. You couldn't get it without the, the switch up here in the upper horn, which is how the Stingray RS is typically came with the switch right here and I hated that. I just didn't want, it was right in my strumming pad. It was so uncomfortable. Well, Dustin's model is announced, but it's not out yet. You can't get them. And Tim at Ernie Bob Music Man, hi Tim, suggested, well, we now have the file, the CNC program for Dustin's guitar. Maybe we could modify that. And I thought, great. I only want a single volume and I want the toggle right here and that's it. I do want the humbucker single coil in the neck and I would love a blue sparkle of some sort because I loved the idea of playing real nasty riffs with something like this, like a real pretty guitar. Also, the sparkle finish will forever remind me of being a 16, 17 year old kid in the mid nineties seeing you know, all the 50s Gretsch guitars, you know, the Everclear video and the, the Black Hole Sun Soundgarden video as an example. So yeah, this is my number one. I've been all over the world with this guitar and it's, you can't see it on camera, but it's it's pretty beat up, but in like the right way. I just played the hell out of this thing and it's been rained on, it's been sweated all over, it's been dropped, it's been, yeah, it just, it just keeps on going. So yeah, Mr. Sparkle, guitar number one. Guitar number two is Mr. Sparkle's sibling, my touring sibling or its touring sibling, in that this is my Sweetwater exclusive color, Teely Dan, which was later called Teely Dan. This started off as a one-off custom guitar built for me by Ernie Bob Music Man, as I needed something uh, that would replace Mr. Sparkle um, that was kind of set up and built similarly um, and I just wanted some, I was just feeling something a little, uh, a little new and I didn't want the neck pickup. I was kind of feeling, a lot of people think that this is like my tribute to Tom DeLonge and it's not Tom DeLonge. I was, I was in my twenties before Blink-182 came out. So Tom DeLonge didn't have anything to do with my influence with my playing. I love Blink and I love Tom, but he had nothing to do with me and my playing. Um, I was actually going for like a Jerry Cantrell, Alice in Chains kind of vibe, but my own take on that. Cause Jerry played a white GNL Rampage with a single humbucker. And I always loved that. And I love Tortoiseshell and I love the sixties vibe. And this guitar was also toured around the world. I played this at Hellfest in France to 15,000 people. Um, I played it at a bunch of festivals in Europe. Um, I've taken this all over the country this was first played on the Beartooth Wage War Tour that Drake Under did in 2021. And 
This is honestly pretty beat up. You can't see it in the light. I mean, you can see some of the scuffs, but and you can see it on the control plate. You can see where my thumbnail is kind of dug out for me playing with the, uh, the volume a lot in the middle of a show, which I do do, or I'll pull it. And this thing is uh, starting to get a little rusty and it's just, it's got a lot of mojo and I love this guitar so, so much. So yeah, this is, uh, this is T. Lee Dan. So Guitar 3 is a pretty popular one amongst people that are ever lurking on my Instagram channel. The, the crux of this guitar was kind of a joke, if I'm totally honest with you. So the very first guitar I was ever sent from Ernie Ball Music Man for anything, for any reason, was an OG James Valentine guitar that subsequently I gave to original Dragged Under guitarist, Josh, who's been on the channel before, uh, Josh Wildhorn. And it was just a regular white one. I, a couple years later, I, I sign on with Ernie Ball Music Man and I, need, and I need some guitars. And I asked them, hey, could you do a Valentine but make it a little tougher looking? And my friend Jason Richardson had a burl top guitar that he had just gotten. And I thought that was the coolest looking guitar I'd ever seen the burl top and the color. He did it in this colorway, and I thought, that's so cool. Could you do a burl top on a Valentine? And Tim said, I don't know. Let me let me ask engineering. And engineering came back and went, We think we can make it happen. Let's try it. I, I thought, okay, cool. I didn't, wasn't actually expecting a yes, but okay, cool. And we got this. We got the toughest looking Valentine signature guitar ever. Um, it has Fishman kill switch engage pickups. It is a really dead simple riff machine. I mean, this is honestly like a Les Paul Jr. on steroids, really. Um, it's has its regular, I think it's a uh, older body. I can't remember what kind of bo body wood it is, but I always thought it was funny because they were out of black uh, string ferrules. And so they're like, well, do you want to wait? It was something ridiculous. It was like, do you want to wait two months for the guitar while we wait for the black ferrules? Or do you want chrome ones that we have in stock? And I thought, just put the chrome ones in. It's on the back. I don't care. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it all over the place anyway. And we got it. Literally, I think I got this the day before we shot the Hypochondria music video back in 2019. Really early 2019. This is one of the first guitars they ever made for me. And I used it and ma it was mainly a studio guitar for a long time. And then I did one of the last, I think it did the last two Drag Under tours that I ended up doing. And I played it all over the place in the light. You can see like it's pretty scuffed up from my belt here. And it's it's been very, very played and toured. And there's, you know, there's a big old ding on the, uh, on the headstock and you know, just comes with the touring guitar. This is one of my best sounding guitars, and we did use this on a couple of songs on the first Drake Under record, um, and the uh, Upright Animals record as well. It just is very, very clear sounding, not a ton of low end, and it just sustains for days. And it was just a really, really great live guitar for me. Yeah, Valentine. Guitar number four in my rack is this 2018 Paul Reed Smith Custom 22 in a one-off satin black finish and this this guitar is kind of weird if you look at it because notice it has the mccarty switching system control layout package on it with this black satin finish now this is the only one that is was ever made like this and what this was was there is basically a proof of concept rack at paul reed smith's factory where they try different things and see how different combinations of things, whether that's control layout or finish work. And there is a rack of these guitars, these experimental one-off guitars on a rack. And my friend James, Quimper Sound, hello James, love you. Uh, a dear friend of mine uh, is a PRS dealer and he was at the factory choosing his wood library guitars. Being a dealer, that's what you get to do. And he was walking by and he saw this guitar and he said, I'll take it, I'll buy it. And they said, okay, if you if you want it, sure, we'll sell it to you. I happened to be at the store the day that this was delivered and I saw this guitar unboxed and I thought, wait one second. 
I have to have that guitar. That is the sickest Paul Reed Smith I have ever seen in my entire life. And I still think that. This is a 28T Custom 22. I replaced the bridge pickup fairly recently with the metal PRS pickup, which I much prefer over the 8515, which is very, very bass heavy. This thing is so played. Um, I don't know if you can see, the satin finish has now turned to gloss from my arm and my, my fingers touching the top of the finish. Um, it's also, it's pretty dinged up on the back just from playing it and being in the rack and having things dropped on it or knocked into it, you know, camera stuff, which happens, but really this has a lot of play wear, which is the perfect kind of wear. And this is one of my favorite guitars I have ever owned. Um, there's dings all over the edge and I wouldn't have it any other way. I love this PRS Custom 22. Guitar number five is what I consider to be my my first guitar. It's not technically my first guitar. Technically, this is be, I think my third guitar. My first guitar being an acoustic guitar, a 70s Yamaha. And then I had a homemade kick guitar as my first electric guitar. This is my first real electric guitar. And I got this for my 15th birthday in 1995, November, 1995. And we went to Don's Green River Music in Auburn, Washington, and I got to pick it out. And it had a rosewood neck, uh, rosewood board rather, and it was a regular standard black and white Fender Squire Strat, Mexican made. And I think my dad paid 350 bucks for it in 1995. And it was the most incredible guitar. And it really, quite frankly, not to be dramatic, it changed the course of my entire life because suddenly I was just so obsessed with playing guitar. And I played gigs with this with my punk bands, various punk bands and all that kind of stuff. I gigged with just this guitar for over a decade, subsequently. I played the frets off the neck, the original neck, and I always wanted a maple neck, but you just never saw them when I was a kid. I just never ever saw maple neck strats, and I was obsessed with the Smashing Pumpkins, and I was obsessed with Nirvana, all these strat guys, and I really wanted a maple neck, specifically because of Billy Corgan. So, in the really early 2000s, in 2001, because this neck is from 2000. Um, in 2001, I found this loaded neck with locking fender tuners for, I think it was $120 on eBay. And that was much cheaper than having the original neck refretted or the same. So I thought, I'm just gonna buy that neck and slap it on. And it's been the most incredible guitar ever since. Notice I have the lace sensor pickups, just like Billy Corgan. This is an incredible sounding guitar. And it was recently brought back to life by the fine folks at Sweetwater. They plucked and redid the frets for me and uh, redid the nut and fixed some wiring issues that it had. And this guitar is probably the most sentimental of any guitar that I have. And if the house was on fire and I could only bring one guitar, probably be this one because this means so much to me. I became a guitar player on this guitar. Guitar number six is actually a, a really recent acquisition. I had a 68 custom Murphy Lab Les Paul that I had for about a year and I just traded that in along with another guitar to get this uh, ultralight aged Murphy Lab R9 Gibson Les Paul standard. Uh, I seem to like the standards more than I do the customs. I wanna like the customs and I aesthetically like the customs I don't like a lot of customs. I don't like the feel of the customs. The standards for me are where it's at. Um, I, again, James Quimper Sound, a dear friend of mine, um, let me go to his store being a Gibson dealer and he had six Murphy Lab R9 Les Pauls and I got to play all of them and kind of go through them and choose the best one. And I, and I did just that that day and this thing has the most sustain out of just about any guitar I have. I mean, this thing will sustain for for like 45 seconds, a chord will sustain. It's unbelievable. Incredibly stable, perfect weight for a Les Paul, in my opinion. It's about eight and a half pounds, almost nine pounds. And when you're playing it, it just, it just balances correctly and it sounds unbelievable. Um, I don't think you guys have seen this guitar yet on the channel, except for this is the first time you're seeing this. But yeah, I just got this a couple weeks ago and it's an incredible guitar. 
So Guitar 7 is a very toured 2012 Gibson Les Paul Custom. And this is one of the customs that I really gravitated towards. I got this over COVID. I got it off Reverb and I got a really good deal on it. And the owner didn't know this was not black. I knew that there was a, um, a rosewood board, which I thought was weird, but I didn't think too much of it until I got it and people were like, is that a rosewood cut? Wait, what? What is that? What guitar is that? Is that a fake? And, I, and for a second, I thought it was a fake. What this actually is, is a 2012 Modero Gibson Les Paul Custom. Um, this was basically, they had just been raided by the FBI and all their ebony, Gibson's ebony had been taken at the time. So they made the special edition rosewood board. This is basically an oxblood guitar. It's not black. It's like a really, really, really dark purple and it's been toured to hell and back. It was toured for like a decade by the guy I got it from. And the bridge was collapsing when I got it. The frets are actually in perfect condition. The tuners were worn out. It was played in a metalcore band and tuned to, I think it was like drop A or something. And yeah, so I had it reset up. I currently, I had Fishman's in it for a while. I took the Fishman's out and I put it back to stock with the exception of I put a Gibson 500T uh, in the bridge and I just love this guitar. It's pretty beat up and the gloss is worn off on it and it's, it's perfect. I absolutely love this guitar. Guitar number eight in my guitar rack is a fairly new Slash edition Gibson Les Paul Standard in November Burst. I actually bought this on tour and I don't know, I was, you know, late night in the bus and you're just scrolling through and you go visit some guitar shops and you want a really good Les Paul that does something a little different than the Les Pauls that you currently have. I didn't have, I only had the custom at the time when I got this, I think two years ago now. And I'd been told that these custom buckers were really, really cool and I don't know, I always wanted the Joe Perry uh, November Rain guitar. I think that guitar is the epitome of the perfect burst. It's tobacco and it's like, oh, it's so good. This guitar is totally stock and it sounds unbelievable. And it came up, set, set up perfectly. And I use this all the time for all sorts of stuff and this is just a really, really great left of center guitar. And when you don't want something that vintagey sounding, but you also don't want something super, super modern, this is the guitar, the guitar I go to if I'm looking for, for something a little different for Les Pauls. Guitar number nine is a guitar I first fell in love with on tour. Uh, Drake Downer was on tour with Wage War and Beartooth. Uh, Cody and Seth from Wage War played some custom Jim Root Jazz Masters. And I was like, those are the coolest guitars ever. I've never seen one in person. And they're like, oh dude, play it. Like go, go, go and rip some songs with it. Like check it out. And I was absolutely in love with the Root Jazz Masters. This is a USA guitar. I bought this while on tour. I literally the next day ordered it. Um, and it's incredible. The only thing I've done to this guitar is put the 18 volt mod in for the EMGs. But other than that, it's bone stock. This is my drop C guitar and it's really heavy. And I just love the jazz master shape. I've always been in love with the shape. I, I would argue this is one of the best guitar shapes ever created. Um, I just love this guitar. It's really, really heavy and it makes you play a real certain way, which I think is what any good guitar should do. Yeah. Jazz master Jim Root. And last but not least, we have guitar number 10 in my guitar rack. We have a brand new 2023 uh, American Ultra Jazz Master. This is basically a modern version of the vintage Jazz Master stuff. And there's a modern amenities. For example, this comes stock with locking tuners and noiseless pickups. So you don't have that real nasty hum that a lot of Jazz Masters have with their stock pickups. This also sounds unbelievably awesome. Um, this has a real nice top end twang to it. 
It's incredibly comfortable to play. I am also completely in love with this finish. This Mocha Burst from Bender is unbelievable. Um, I just got this like two weeks ago as of this filming. Um, it also has a push uh, on the volume pot to put both of these pickups into uh, parallel or series. I can't remember. But anyway, it automatically selects both these pickups are on. So if you turn this off, it's the normal selector. But if you push this on, it selects both of these at the same time. And it sounds just huge and full. And I really, really love this guitar because it's when I need something for something more vintage. Like if I'm doing a fuzz pedal demo or something like that, this is a great guitar to have for that because it's not my usual ultra high output active guitar or something like that. It's just something a little different and a little bit more versatile than, you know, a super screaming loud Les Paul or something like that. So yeah, Ultra Jazz Master, super sick. And that's it. That is my, uh, that's my current guitar rack for the very end of 2023. Do you like this kind of content? Did you like what you saw? Let me know down in the comments. And while you're there, if you feel like further supporting this channel, please consider subscribing. And with that, you've been wonderful, I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.